passed out 188 bottles of water and about 120 glow sticks and dozens and dozens of um, uh, different keychains and crosses and, and things for the children and for the community as a way for us to reach out to, have, to those who have yet to encounter the love, the grace, and the peace that we have found. The other thing that I want you to know, and, and I just have to say, say thank you and praise the Lord, yesterday we held a district meeting here in the barn. And we had delegates and lay people and pastor from all of our new Southeast district. And every single person who came to that meeting, after the meeting or during the meeting or during the break, had to say something about two things. The first thing they all said is, Pastor, we love the bar. <laughs> The first thing that everybody said, we love the barn. The second thing that everybody said is, Pastor, you have the best music ministry that we have ever seen. So all of our ministry, go get up. Get up. <laughs> On behalf of the church, and when I say the church, not only those who are here, but on behalf of our conference, on behalf of the United Methodist Church, on behalf of our district, our bishop, Bishop Harvey, our district superintendent, Pastor Vince, Dr. Harris, thank you all for leading us in worship. The other thing that I want you to know is that I have the best two associate pastors in the Texas Annual Conference. <laughs> Take it away. Give him a nice big round of applause. <laughs> uh, you may have noticed the uh, liturgically appropriate LED lighting that we have. It is green because this is ordinary time. That's what we talk about ordinary time. Ordinary time is not just not special. Ordinary is ordinary because it's ordered. And so this is the 12th Sunday of ordinary time. But we just click it on Sundays until we get to Advent. But Ordinary time is also a really good time to make habits. And so some of the habits uh, that you could make maybe is joining a small group. We do have one that's the, right now it's 9.30 uh, Sunday mornings. They're called uh, the Garage Band. The Garage Band. And they just started, the, just the first Sunday they've done it, uh, study on the Enneagram. And it's not too uh, late to get in on that if you want to. And then, Pay attention to the newsletter and our social media. Uh, we're going to have some other opportunities if the Enneagram is not appropriate for you or it just doesn't uh, get your attention. So make sure that uh, you find yourself a small group. Sometime in the next month or so, we're going to have a lot more uh, ideas out there for you. A little bit of housekeeping. We do have uh, water and coffee, and so we have plenty of uh, donut holes over there left. Totally appropriate. If you get hungry, if you get thirsty during the service, then get up and go get some of that. Amen. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. God does not want you to be hungry or thirsty Amen. while you worship. Okay? Uh, if you have too much water, too much coffee, the uh, restroom is behind the neon sign over there. And so uh, if you're on the ladies on the left, then on the right, ladies, don't worry, that seat is supposed to be warm. Okay? Yeah. If you haven't been in there yet, it is a, it is a heated seat. <laughs> yes, it's, it's awesome. We're glad you're here. I see a lot of new faces, so uh, that's really exciting. Uh, when you leave out of here, one more thing. If you would stay on Artie's property to do that, there's a, a shed and a house. There's a road that goes between those. If you stay that road, they'll make sure you stay off the neighbor's property. We want to be good neighbors to everyone. But however you got here, we're, we're glad you're here, whether you're coming over the, uh, the internet highway there or whether you came out of gravel road. Whether this morning you uh, drug yourself out of bed and did not want to come, or your mom drug you out of bed and didn't want to come, or whether you've been looking forward to this all week, however you got here, we are glad you're here. Will you join me in our opening prayer? Gracious God, we thank you so much for gathering us as, as the body of Christ in Baytown, Montevideo. 
As we gather this morning, we gather here to offer our worship to you as an offering. And as it goes up to heaven, we pray, God, that you find it pleasing. God, open our hearts, open our minds, prepare us now as we worship you. Okay. If you would stand, we're going to start our worship this morning.
that we say, it is something that makes us unique as Christians, and it also is something that we join with all other Christians in the world. All Christians believe these things, and that's why we say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. into the body 
not just as individuals, but also as a body of Christ, so that when we pray for one another, it is not just your individual prayer that goes up to God, but it is the prayer of the faithful, the prayer of the body of Christ. So when we say, Lord, hear our prayer, it is a combined multitude of the prayers that we speak and those that remain within our hearts that go up as an offering to God. Friends, let us prepare our hearts for prayer.
for our brother the wind, and for air and clouds, calms and all weather, praise be our Lord. For our sister water, who serves us and is humble and precious and chaste, praise be our Lord. For our brother fire, by whom you light up the night, and who is fair and merry and very mighty and strong, praise be our Lord. For our mother the earth, who sustains us and keeps us and brings forth various fruits and flowers and many colors and grass, praise be our Lord. For all those who pardon one another for your love's sake and who bear weakness and tribulation, praise be our Lord. Blessed are they who peaceably shall endure walking by your most holy will. For you, O Most High, shall give them a crown. Praise and bless the Lord, and give thanks unto God, and serve God with great humility. O great God, and we lift up those who are near and dear to our hearts. of the children of God we pray that the word you taught us they are Father who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. By the will of heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into
before we pass the peace today, allow me just a teachable moment. When we pray, the passing of the peace is a sign of love, peace, and reconciliation. All right? So here's what we're going to practice. Turn to your neighbor and tell a neighbor, peace be with you. Now turn to your neighbor and tell a neighbor, don't tell me about your day. Go ahead. Okay? Turn to your neighbor and tell a neighbor, don't tell me about your family. Tell your neighbor that's more before or after church. The passing of the peace is called the passing of the peace. And so I say unto you this morning, would you please stand that we may share in signs of love, peace, and reconciliation. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share in God's peace.
unite. May the seeds that we plant grow into strong branches which reach out to nurture the community. O oh Lord, call us forth. Help us to realize that we want to bring our, our spiritual realities into fruition with the assistance of this material world in which you have given us. And we pray all these things. Lord, hear our prayers.
Romans chapter 11. So I ask, have they stumbled so as to fall? By no means, but through their stumbling, salvation has come to the Gentiles, so as to make Israel jealous. Now, if their stumbling means riches for the world, and if their loss means riches for Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Now, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I celebrate my ministry in order to make my own people jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. And if the root is holy, then the branches are also holy. The word of God for the people to find. Thanks be to God. I ask you to please be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you this morning. First of all, just to say that you are holy that you are radiant, that you are magnanimous. And it is the holiness and the beauty that you bring into our lives that bear forth a resemblance of the image, the gentleness, and the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the gift of the Hebrew Scriptures, the gift of the Greek Scriptures, that which we call the Old and the New, that which we call your Word, the Bible, a living witness of the work that you have done among your people. And Lord, we thank you that you have gathered us today. Not that one word may be spoken, but that a hundred words would leave this bar later today, conformed and shaped into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is the living word, Christ, that lives in us. For we are the only Bible that the world will read. For we are the people of God who have been called into this time, into this age, into this space to be witnesses of God's unconditional love and unending grace. Lord, we are the ones we have been waiting for and that your body, your son, and your spirit now lives in us as we prepare our community for the fullness of your kingdom and your son, Jesus Christ. Mighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, for you are our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Let the church say, Amen. Friends, turn to your neighbor and tell the neighbor, I have sinned, I have sinned many times. <laughs> now turn to that same neighbor and tell him, and I enjoy it most of the time. <laughs> Raise your hand if that statement is not true for you. See, this, this is where I wish we had three or four cameras to kind of you know, <laughs> go over the sanctuary, keep everybody honest, because, you know, your family can go back and watch this later, okay? All right. So the Bible says that there is a struggle within the mind and the heart of Paul. And the struggle is that he is looking for ways to reconcile what the world has said that cannot be reconciled. Paul is trying to be a bridge, in a sense, between Judaism and this movement that is not yet what you and I perhaps would call a formalized, 
formalized or even informalized religion. So there are those who were born into the family of God through Israel. They are those who call themselves Gentiles. They are those who have known God in a sense from the beginning. And there are those who are just now hearing about the power and the love of this wonderful, magnanimous God whom we cannot see. And so therefore, we don't build an idol to it. Think about it for a moment. It's easier to have an object of our faith than it is to have a living God. A living God requires living people who have the openness of heart and the wisdom of mind to say, Lord, use me. An object, an idol of my religion, I can put on an altar somewhere, and I can come and bow down before that object, before that altar, and I can say whatever I want, and I can do whatever I want, because the perception within my heart is that somehow that object, or therefore that God, does not leave the temple. A living God is the God that I preach. A living Christ is the Christ that I know. A spirit who have found dwelling within the hearts of the people is the only spirit that motivates me because everything else falls short of the glory of God. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, let me be honest. I have enjoyed my sin, but I love God even more. Because the reality, folks, is that we are who we are and we struggle. Sin perhaps not what you think it is because we have defined sin as behavior and we have told people as a church that sin is everything that we don't want you to do how many of you grew up in a church were having their hair too long for the ladies was a sin Friends, I promise you, God does not care how long your hair is. There are bigger things we need to tackle in this world before we are concerned about what's going on in the beauty shop. How many of you grew up in an environment where your skirt has to be this long in order for you to be a Christian? Friends, I promise you, the God whom we serve is many, many, many things, but he is not a tailor. Amen? <laughs> if you need a tailor, there is a wonderful gentleman down the road on Garth Road, and there is a wonderful lady who runs a dry cleaner on Baker, and I highly recommend them both. But we don't go there for our faith. How many of you have been told that the only way to be a Christian is to be paired with the right person. Mm, mm, it just got real. Friends, Jesus offered us unconditional love that it may be shared and multiplied in such a way that the only thing that is truly and earnestly a sin is what we do to hurt our neighbors and to hurt ourselves. That's what the nature and the truth of sin is. Now, if you have behavioral issues, then I highly recommend you get yourself a behavioral therapist. 
That's a different problem. And so Paul says, how do we expand the fold of God? And how do we preach to those whom we do not know or understand? And what do we say to those whom we know and understand, but who are unwilling to open the gates of the church to the greater glory of God? Because let me tell you something, folks. When you get to heaven, the manifestation of God's glory is the multitude of God's people. The old and the new, the before and the after. Let me read to you a few verses before the verses that we just read. I ask, Ben says Paul, has God rejected his people? By no means. For Paul says, I am myself an Israelite and a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin, and he gives us his pedigree. And God has not rejected his people whom he already knew. Do you not know that the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have de demolished your altars. I alone, I am left. And they are seeking my life, but what is the divine reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 who have not bowed to the knee to Baal. So too at the present time there is a remnant. But if you read verse 7, and verse 6, and verse 5, where I just stopped, the means by which God has chosen God's people has not been by lineage, has not been by tribe, has not been by those who wear the right length hair, has not been by those who wear the correct length skirt. And by the way, do you notice how it's always the women? Somebody say amen. amen. All right, I'm going to stop right there because that's another sermon for another day. <laughs> Somehow it's always the women that are sinning according to organized religion. Apparently in organized religion, men forget how to sin. Hmm. <laughs> I'll let you tackle that one at lunch today after church. Dr. June, there it is. Yes, ma'am? Okay. Paul says, so too, at the present time, there is a remnant. And the remnant, those whom God has called, are chosen by grace. And if you don't believe me, read your Bible. Chapter 11, verse 5 and a half. There in the middle of my page it says, Those at the present time who have been chosen have been chosen by grace. Grace because it is through the stumbling of Israel that God has found a way not to discard or to discourage God's people, but to expand God's people. People. The Bible teaches us today that God's people have not been put aside or laid aside, but that the gates of our human understanding have been opened wider than we knew before. And Paul says, yes, we, because he is an Israelite, we have stumbled. And if by our stumbling, Others come to know that we are not perfect, then others will know that it's okay to love the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and tell the neighbor, imperfect people are the people of God.
the company of those who are here shape the reality of what the church will be moving forward. See, those who know the history and those who know where we have come from, not only in the church at large, not only in the modern church, but more specifically in the United Methodist Church, we know that we are struggling. And our struggle is not so much, I believe, and, and, and we can agree and disagree, but, but this is what I believe is the heart of our struggle. It's not about exclusiveness or inclusion. It's about the old versus the new. That's the real struggle. That our ways of doing church have been insufficient for new generations. And yet, the old have remained faithful and I am unwilling to leave them behind. I want to serve a church where every older adult can come to worship on Sunday morning and hear one of the old hymns, like Revive Us Again. How many of you remember that one? Camp meeting hymn, right? Revive Us Again. And at the same time, hear one of the contemporary praise songs of the faith because our fellowship would be incomplete if we did not have the wisdom of the ages and the strength of the new. Because I am unwilling to leave anybody behind. Because our mission field is full and expanding. Because there are new homes being built every day. Because there are children who need the unconditional love of Jesus Christ. Because even through the struggles of the United Methodist Church in the last several years, God is birthing a new generation of Christians that is willing to embrace the new while holding on to the old. Because our faith came from those who came before us. And our future comes from those who are yet ahead of us. My brothers, my sisters, I say this carefully, but oftentimes when I think about the nature of God, I use this word. God is a Greek God. Because God doesn't just want some. God wants all. What once was a struggle for us became God's glory. And we praise God for the struggles of the church up until this point that our own stumbling blocks, our own faults and shortcomings, the very words that Paul speaks to the Israelites, Paul can speak to the Methodites today, to say that where we have struggled, where we have fallen, where we have created strife and struggle within ourselves, God is planting new seeds so that more and more people may come into the fellowship of Jesus Christ. And Paul says, now I'm speaking to you, Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glorify my ministry. In other words, I am glad to minister to those whom we do not yet know. Paul says, for if their rejection, if their confusion, if their lack of understanding, and then I say, if our rejection, our confusion, our lack of understanding, our inability to see the greater glory of God, will bring acceptance and love, because we're finally 
going to get real about who we are. We have all sinned, and God still loves us. That's what contemporary theologians call the goodness of God. I praise God today. I praise God today for the priests and the Pharisees who got questions when they encountered Jesus Christ because their questions have become our answer. I praise God today for the struggles of Paul because his struggles have become our faithfulness. I praise God today for the doubts of the past because those doubts have become our miracles. I praise God today for the unbelief of generations before for it has planted the seeds of faith that are being planted in this barn right now. I praise God today for the disregard that we showed to so many people in the past, simply because it is giving us a new vision for the future. I praise God today for the clumsiness and the bulk of the United Methodist Church, because out of that clumsiness and out of that bulk, a new creation is being brought to life. I praise God today for the sins of the past, for these will determine the way of the future. I praise God today for the rupture that we have faced in our denomination, for it has given birth to a new church. The church that I once For the dead of what is before us, for out of the dead has come our resurrection. For Paul says, if the part of the dough that is offered at first it's just the first fruits. It is their holiness. It is their holiness that will make the rest of the dough holy and good and righteous in the sight of Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for your church today. We pray more specifically for this congregation in the body, for the miracles and the movement of your spirit that we have already seen. Lord, for those who have come seeking refuge out of the storm, Lord, we pray for the abundance of your spirit in this place. And Lord, we pray for what the future holds. Lord, we thank you in advance for the shifts, for the movements. We thank you in advance for the challenges yet unknown. We thank you in advance for those who will come to know Christ through this congregation. We thank you in advance for the land that has not yet been purchased and the building that has not yet been built. We thank you in advance for the children who will sing your praises who have not yet even been born. We thank you in advance for the ministries that will envelop this community as a result of what we are doing today, Lord, for what the future holds 
has yet to be revealed, and yet we praise you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord. Almighty God, for your hand of mercy and for your all incumbency, all inclusive, all available grace and love. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. All of these blessings, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and with the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. 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 Friends, before we close, I want to remind you that Pastor Ellen, Pastor Clayton, myself, and also uh, our lay minister, Deborah, right there, we are all available to you for prayer if you so desire. In a moment, we are going to sing together. And if you need for one of us to pray for you, we'll be at different parts here in the barn, and you just come and find us. I also want you to know that if you would like to join this congregation, if your heart is lifted by what you see and by what you hear, I want you to go online, I want you to fill out the form and let me know, and I want to visit with you so that we can formally welcome you into the fellowship of this church. And in all things, church, I want to remind you that if we are willing, God is able. Let's stand and let us sing.
Somebody turn to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, God has been good to me. <laughs> Friends, I ask you to please be seated for just a moment. And would you put your hands together for Pastor Ellen? And I know she has some announcements. What a joy it is to be in worship with you today. As we come together as this new and resurrected church, we are about to embark on a new step of our adventure together. And we want to invite you so that you can all be a part of it. Starting on September 10th in the Vanderpool's upper room, we are going to begin a Sunday afternoon time of fellowship and study. It will begin at 4 o'clock with a handbell ensemble that's open to people of all ages and all experience levels. Then, at 5 o'clock, there will be two opportunities you can transition to. Our youth will have fresh adventures each week, sometimes staying there, sometimes going to district youth worship on the 10th, and other adventures in the community. At the same time, also at 5 o'clock, we will be having a Disciple Bible Study Fast Track session starting on September 10th and running through the fall for 12 weeks, looking especially at the Hebrew Scriptures that we sometimes call the Old Testament and the roots of our faith. As we move forward together, it will be so wonderful to have time to express our love, to grow in our faith. Please know all are welcome and if you can think of anyone who might enjoy any of these activities or all of them, bring them along with you. Then, today, as we wrap up our time together, we are also still taking photos for the new church directory. If you come over to this wall, we'll get you all set up. Also today, we are putting together some more bags for the impoverished and those who are housing deprived in our community. And we will be assembling those together right at that table. Thank you for being a part of our church. We are stronger together. Thank you. Yeah, well, okay. So how, how, do we, uh, how do we find the address for the Vanderpool's upper room? If you look in your newsletter or at any of our social media platforms, we're posting videos about this. You can also come and ask any of us, and we'd be happy to get you the address. And we'll have flyers as the time comes. <laughs> also, on the next day, September 11th, uh, we'll start with the Breakfast Club. That's going to be a group that's going to meet at 6.30 at Denny's on Barth Road, and we're going to study the uh, letters of Paul. You might be thinking, I don't like Paul. That's okay. 6.30 a.m., yeah. That's important. <laughs> breakfast Club is at 6.30 a.m., unless you work nights like me and breakfast. Different. Anyway, uh, but yeah, we're going to be studying the letters of Paul. If you think you don't like Paul, this is the study for you, because I don't find disagreeing with Paul. So it's going to be a fun time, and also on the 10th, that morning, there's going to be another uh, small group besides the garage band that's going to be studying, what's the name of the book again? I always forget. Parenting with Love and Logic. Parenting with Love and Logic. It's going to be somewhere around here, um, and so uh, that will be on the 10th, too. Like I said, you can have lots of new new chances to find us all great. Friends, again, give them a nice big round of applause. I, I love it. <laughs> Would you please stand for a closing lesson? Turn to your neighbor and tell a neighbor, I have sinned many times. <laughs> and tell a neighbor, but I know you have too. <laughs> And tell a neighbor, and I know lots of people who have sinned many times. <laughs> tell him, so I'm going to invite them to church. <laughs> and tell a neighbor, because they will fit right in. <laughs> Go forth as the beloved, grace-filled people of God. And tell somebody what Christ has done for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and let the church say, Amen. 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 Friends, we'll be right there assembling the backs. You may go in peace. <laughs>